that we are ready for Ape Out, and I'm really looking forward to this run. It's gonna be Ape Out by Osmo, it's gonna be wordless, it'll be roughly half an hour, and I'm so looking forward to this. So, with that being said, why don't I let Osmorn take you all into this? Osmorn, it's all yours. We should be live. Hello, All awesome right, then. Hello. Hello, everybody. I hope you guys are having a wonderful time at mid-spring mid speed fling. I like saying words today. Um, it is very late for me. And we are going to ape out with some ape out tonight. So, again, I'm very glad to have George here with me hosting a wonderful friend of mine and i'm really excited to show off and be back here with the I... midwest speed fest people for sure uh, they're a great group and i'm very excited to be showing off this game for them it is ape out we're going to be playing the warpless category which means we can't do warps or any out of bounds but there's still a lot of stuff that we can do um and that we're going to be taking advantage of so um george um did you did you need you needed to say something i feel like i interrupted you there for a bit uh, no, not at all. So whenever you're ready, just give us a free to one and we can get this one started. All right. So as you can see, there are four albums here and each album will have a series about eight or seven levels, depending on which album. And we're just going to go through each and every one of them as quickly as we can. So the first one is, in fact, subject four. And the timing will begin once I hit start. We're going to hit five, four, three, two, one. Let's go. So, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Abound, it is a 2019 indie game um, published by uh, Devolver Digital. It is created by Gabe Gazillo and also has art by Bennett Foddy. And so, um, they're big names in, in, in gaming, known names that have worked on this game. And the entire premise behind it is that you are an ape. That is the whole plot. Um, and each level has randomly generated um, structures each time that you play it. There's a layout and there's the enemy um, behavior that's completely randomly generated. Um, and so being able to react to that, being able to improvise on the fly, it is the name of the game when it comes to Ape Out. And you might have seen in that beginning portion that there were some credits, there were some title sequences that came up when I um, pushed those enemies into a wall. And technically you could just not kill any enemies in that first level and save the time that it takes when the game pauses in order to show the opening credits. But going through the entire level without killing an enemy is pretty difficult without actually getting killed yourself. Because these enemies sometimes have really, really good aim more often than I care to admit. And other times they have really bad aim. But that was an example of really, really good aim. And we got introduced to three enemies so far. Number one has been just the standard riflemen, those um, uh, short white guys. And then the guys with blue vests, this one is the shotgun enemies. They spray uh, a large uh, range of bullets at you all at once. Um, but they're a bit slower and they're a bit bigger. And meaning that when you push them into like a wall of some kind, um, that is pretty much the only way you can kill them. If you push an enemy into an enemy that is a base less than them, they will not die um, immediately like you would. And then we also get introduced to the bomb enemies. These bomb enemies are enemies that will um, immediately explode into anything that comes into contact with them. And any explosion in this game will instantly kill you. So you want to be very careful because one of the easiest ways to die in this game is probably with through through a bomb enemy, like pushing them really close um, to a wall or to another enemy that's close to you, and then just being way too in range of their explosion. And we're getting really good RNG in this first level because obviously, you know, the the best kind of RNG that you want to get is just a seed uh, with throughout the level that just brings you straight left to right um, and then instead of you know you want to avoid a lot of up and down movement um, but uh, those are the main mechanics that we've been introduced to so far and we're getting pretty close to the end of album one um, one thing that I wanted to mention here is this stuff that I'm doing with the doors I'm 
letting go of the doors and re-grabbing it because the way that the doors work in this game is that they um, go off sound cues and so each door will only open after four ticks and the fourth tick will always be delayed and the way to get rid of that delay is by grabbing onto the door is like um is like uh letting go of the door and re-grabbing it and so the fourth tick will no longer be delayed i'll start to show that off and be more specific about it in like later sections because we're going to see that a bit more often later in this album actually believe it or not so that is the end of side a each album has a side a and a side b both consisting of four levels and so we're just going to go straight into side b Right in here, we are, the alarms are going off. The entire laboratory that we're in has been informed that there is a wild ape on the loose. And you might have seen, seen me um, do um, a specific speed tech where I'm actually like moving a bit faster throughout the hallway transitions. And I'll explain that in this next, after this next level is finished. But first we need to talk about the in the dark sequences. This is probably a first example of a hard coded obstacle whenever you're in, in throughout level throughout 4-5 and also 4-6 at the beginning of these in the dark sequences you're always going to be forced up or down um and so but the rest of the level is pretty procedurally generated and so one thing that's very important in these hallway transitions as i said here is that we're doing a thing called butt sliding you might see that i'm um, angling the ape at a 45 degree angle upright and that allow and the reason that that works is and that allows me to get a bit of a speed boost and the reason that that works is because um, in ape out when you walk towards a wall you kind of end up getting pushed away from it and if you walk at it at a specific angle you get pushed away and forward and so the level transitions and those hallway level transitions have the perfect length that allows us to uh, perform those pretty pretty uh, pretty frequently and pretty efficiently as we are doing right now. And in these in the Zari sequences, I am forgetting to mention that these enemies that we are interacting with, if you're in their cone of light, they'll actually react faster and shoot you faster than they normally would. And because of that, they're kind of annoying. There are certain exceptions to enemies that don't do that, but they're in much later levels. A bit of a flashing lights warning, and now? I was a bit late on the warning here, but uh, better, better late than never. And here we just need to make sure that we're going around these pillars to avoid these enemies coming out of the elevators here. And as you can see here, that is a pretty good example of the fact that the music will not start in a level until an enemy has been killed. Um, it could be from your actions. If another enemy kills an enemy, then um, the music will start that way too. Um, if an enemy hits you, I believe that the music also starts. I don't really have that happen as often. And we're getting very risky with some of these enemy interactions. We're just letting enemies shoot us. If we get shot three times, um, we will die and have to restart the level all over again. And so uh, we want to be very careful. But however, your, your health does get replenished after each level transition. And so it's not all bad. Uh, I'm going to be a bit careful here. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be a bit careful because I don't want these guys to shoot me while I'm opening this door. And here's another really good example of of that um, act that I said with the doors of how I'm letting go of the door after the third tick in order to make sure that there's no delay in the fourth tick. Right, and one, two, three, let go, fourth tick, boom. And thankfully that guy had really, really bad aim. And right here in this ending hallway, we need to really, really hope that there's not a bomb guy because these bomb guys are really annoying to deal with in this hallway because they're just so easy to, um, to like, um, die from especially when you're in like confined spaces like this but thankfully we only got one bomb guy and he was in a pretty good position to which we didn't have to worry about him so that is album one now we are moving on to album two the first one was a laboratory the second one is a high-rise building what does a gorilla have to do in a high-rise building we'll never know but it does leave for a really really good um really 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 good level and one thing that I am going to mention here is that there is a glitch here that I'm opting to, to not do. And it is um, during that loading screen, um, right before this cutscene starts, there's a small window of time in which your inputs are being read. And so if you were to hold down the push button, um, right bumper or right trigger, 
um, you will uh, end up pushing that guy out of the window before I, uh, before the cutscene starts, and you can just skip it entirely. However, for whatever reason, doing that will actually cause a the game to be in a really, really weird state, where if you die within the first half of this album, so any part inside A, um, you will actually... Um, you will actually soft lock the game and be forced to restart it. So just for the fact that it's not as marathon friendly, I'm just choosing to opt out of it for now. And my goodness, this is amazing RNG. <laughs> the game is just giving us straight paths um, to and from uh, where, we need to, where we need to go. That's amazing. And we do get introduced to two new enemies uh, at the beginning of this uh, first half of, uh, of this, of this album. And it is these SWAT guys, those guys that came out of the windows, they kind of just spray and pray bullets at you. They oftentimes have really bad aim. And so they're pretty easy to deal with. And there's also the Melvins. If I'm the Melvins are these small little green haired guys. I'm going to see if I can catch one, this guy right here. Um, if you walk towards them, they'll run away from you. But if you run away from them, they'll run towards you and then hit you in the back. They're pretty annoying to deal with, um, especially because of how fast they are. And surprisingly, they oftentimes have really good aim for whatever reason. And so they're just really annoying to deal with. And later they're gonna come in like groups or in like packs. And so that is incredibly annoying to deal with. My, I thought that that was a dead end and I was gonna be so annoyed. And I, I keep, I keep like, jinxing things i don't want to like jinx things but i'm just i'm really i'm getting really good rng so far my god um and uh speaking of dead ends this is the first level to introduce the concept of dead ends primarily because um um they thought it would be more conducive to like the office space environment of this uh this level you know kind of like how you're walking into a walking into a building or walking into a room where there's a meeting happening and you're like oh i'm not supposed to be here and then you like you walk back out and casually it's really really creative and it makes sense to be there especially because they want to make the game harder you know that's probably part of the whole reason why this game is really good is just the difficulty aspect of it and so but in a speedrun setting, it is kind of annoying to get into a dead end, especially if that dead end is really long and you have to walk all the way back thinking that you were going to make it to the end. Like right here, that's a really, that's a, that's a good example of, uh, of what I mean. And so you have to walk all the way back and see here. And there's no way for you to like guess where a dead end is because, you know, procedurally generated levels, RNG. You just got to hope the RNG is in your favor sometimes. And every time that you die, which thankfully hasn't happened yet, I just probably jinxed it, um, the seed also resets itself so you can't memorize the level. Um, you can't, you, the only thing that you can do is kind of adapt to enemy patterns and just hope that you get a good seed. Oftentimes though, I do think that the game seems to like give you um, a better seed if you have died once already. However, that could probably just be placebo, I, I will admit. Probably just feels easier but right here we are um on the on another building as we transitioned in the previous section and um we had the music change and we also get introduced to a another enemy called these snipers the snipers are like these guys are really really easy to deal with um especially because they just they take forever to charge up their um their shots and you probably saw their little um, like lines of red light and from coming from this building when we were in the other building um however um right here in this section we get to um meet up with them up close and personal and realize that they're not much of a threat as they impose on us and right here we're going to go circle back as the as the level title implies and we're going to go to this next section where we're just going to go come back to this building and have to deal with uh, the, the same enemies as we normally have. The Melvins, these snipers, uh, the, the riflemen, and the SWAT members. I have... Okay, I was uh, very afraid that I got shot twice there. I'm going to play it safe here. Losing a bit of time to enemy interaction, but I really want to play it safe. Especially since um, we're pretty deep into the level already and I do not want to die. And thankfully, it's not something I have to worry about. Perfect. It got shot twice, but it's fine. If anything, getting shot twice at the very end of the level actually might be beneficial because you do get a little bit of a boost every time the enemy shoots you. So sometimes, if you if you trust yourself, you can you can make the ballsy move and you know um, trust yourself to get shot and then just have it work out in your favor. Oh dear! Oh my goodness! Oh my god! We got shot twice, and those enemies are really bad at aiming. So we're just gonna hope that we do not get shot again. 
Uh, we're in a very risky situation here. Just have to make it through this one section. Ooh. Oh, we were so close. Okay. Okay. We unfortunately did die. Um, I made the very poor decision of not interacting with those enemies and just letting them shoot me. That is the first death of the run. And unfortunately, it did happen at the very end of a level transition, which means we do have to pretty much do the entire level all over again. Um, which means, George, you can probably read out a donation while I get back to where we were. Uh, it looks like we have no donations at the moment, but you, yes you, dear viewer, you can fix that. You can go to donate.midwestspeedrest.com and get yourself in a sweet donation to save the music. And we can keep raising that counter if you do that. We're currently sitting at $806, and I think we can reach 2000 by the end of this online shift. What do you think, Oz? 2000 by I the end of this? I think we can do it. I believe. Easy. In, in, I believe in the viewers. And very good timing on that on that uh, transition, because now we are in the home stretch of this uh, section, where we are going to go to the lobby. The lobby is a wide open space, and no one likes wide open spaces in this game. They are your worst enemy. Um, I'm going to be playing it a bit safe, especially since we've been shot twice already. But these wide open spaces are very hard to deal with a lot of times, because um, they just... Oh, yeah. Stuff like that can happen, um, where an enemy um, shoots you when you're at the very end, like a, like we did right there. And um, one thing that you can do in order to mend the RNG aspects or like the enemy reactions in these wide open spaces are, for example, um, sticking to the top or bottom of the map, and therefore you can get a bit more cover, and also you can uh, more easily push enemies into walls and stuff like that when you're right next to one. And thankfully. As I suspected, the game did give us a bit of an easier seed this time around. Now that we've already been shot, or now that we've already died. Ooh, okay, I'm... Okay, very good, very good. I was very afraid that I was going to get shot again. We are going to have to redo it, but it's fine. Two deaths so far, that's nothing out of the ordinary. It's perfectly fine. But now we get to move on to album three. We're already halfway done with the game, if you can believe it or not. In album three... We get introduced to another theme again each album has its theme um fugue is this uh it's level is the name of this album and it's a military base why a gorilla needs to be in a military base is it just that dangerous we will never know um but we've learned to not ask questions in the ape out community we just need to go fast um and so the the, the first thing i want to say about uh, album three is just that it really really likes to give you enemies in the groups which makes sense because they're like troops or like squadrons within this military base that um that are um trying to hunt you down and um they oftentimes led by a uh, sniper or not a sniper a um uh, a shotgun enemy like so and as i said before the shotgun enemies weigh more than the standard riflemen and so when you push the rifle the shotgun enemy into this group the riflemen will die but the shotgun enemy will not die and the only way for a shotgun enemy to die is to get pushed into another enemy that is the same weight as them such as another shotgun guy or just straight into a wall like so and we get introduced to another kind of enemy that I hope that we can interact with pretty frequently here, just so I can get a nice introduction for them. It's the machine gun guys. They kind of work very similarly to the SWAT enemies that we found in album two, in which they will just spray and pray that they shoot you with their bullets. Um, but it doesn't look like we're getting any of them right here. So we're just gonna have to wait for their introduction for a bit. But anyway, now we're going into two, three, red alert. It is a very hard level, in, especially in this first section of Album 3, because, or 3-3, three, three, what am I saying? Um, we're, we're in, in this, it's a very hard um, level in this first section of Album 3 because right here, we're getting introduced to another wide open space. And again, as mentioned before, just sticking to the top or bottom of some of these sections will help mend um, some of the randomness 
ever so slightly and allow you to push these enemies more easily into walls than you normally would. And oftentimes, um, it is faster, obviously, to just go straight down the middle. You don't want, you don't want a, lot of, a lot of up and down movement, but, you know, it's very hard for you to trust yourself not to get hit three times in the process of doing that, especially because a lot of the enemies like to congregate in the center of the, of the maps and stuff like that. And thankfully, we were pretty fortunate enough to make it through that with only getting shot once. And here is the end of that level. And now we're in 3-4 uh, incoming. And we're going to get introduced to another in the dark sequence. We haven't really interacted with a machine gun enemy, which is a bit awkward because they introduced this guy, this guy right here. Um, these guys right here. Uh, speak of the devil. You know? um, thank you for showing up the moment that I mentioned that we hadn't been showing up. And you hadn't been showing up. Um, those guys will just, you're, hopefully you'll see them um, shoot some bullets at some point. Just They're just going to spray and pray. And they oftentimes have better aim than the SWAT enemies that we saw in album two. Um, but overall, not the greatest. Um, and here we have another in the dark sequences. And which the enemies, once again, if you're in their cone of light, they will react faster than they normally would. Ex with the exception of the machine gun enemies. I'm not sure if this is an oversight or if it's a deliberate decision. I choose to believe that it is a deliberate decision because I imagine that if an enemy like the machine gun guys were to say, just, just sp spray and pray, a bunch of bullets at you as uh, as uh, you were walking up towards them. They'd shoot you three times before you had a chance to push them. And so I choose to believe that it's a deliberate choice um, from the developers and not just an oversight that they forgot to give them faster and faster reaction times than the rest. And here we get introduced to another into dark sequence. We get to finish this one. It's uh, across two levels. However. One thing that we also get introduced to is the majority of the the, the section that we're going to do the majority of uh, side B in, which is the great outdoors, in which we get in a absolutely amazing shift in energy with the music here. And the great outdoors is again another wide open space. Um, you tend to have a bit more safety here, especially in the top or bottom sections, but um, as we can see in these next few sections, we can probably um, stick towards the middle sometimes and be pretty safe because there's more buildings. And also, um, we get to introduce back to butt sliding as we saw. And there's two main core aspects about album, about this, about side B. First off, it loves to give you so many machine gun enemies. It's not even, or shotgun enemies. It's not even funny, um, especially in huge troops like we saw there. But it also introduces probably the easiest enemy in the game to deal with, which is these flamethrower guys. The flamethrower guys. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. The flamethrower guys. The flamethrower guys are the easiest enemies to deal with. Uh, because they uh, they just move really really slowly and they don't have a really huge range of their fire and as long as you're as long as you keep moving and you're not too close to them they're gonna be pretty easy to deal with um, however you can shoot an enemy into them and uh, they will uh, they will explode and cause an explosion of fire and if you trust yourself to not get hit one strat that you can do is purposefully burn yourself make yourself go on fire that will uh, take away one hit point however it will allow so that it will allow so that um any enemy that is within your general vicinity will just um move out of your way because you're on fire and so that leaves a, a straight path forward for you however that's often not the strat you want to go for because it takes away one hit point and it, that the effects of that only last for so long and right here we get introduced to bombs bombs are these things that i hope will drop in front of me so i don't look like a fool there we go those things uh the bombs the bombs are very dangerous in that they will kill you in one hit um they will just drop at random intervals right in front of you and if you push an enemy into them you'll die if an enemy shoots a bomb that's next to you you'll die if you accidentally touch a bomb you'll die you guessed it um and um they're very very hard to deal with especially if you're next to a large group of enemies um oh dang i barely squeezed through there and that bomb went out of bounds okay i never even know they could shoot there um 
but that is the end of album three thankfully we didn't have any bad luck with the enemy rng there was a lot of really really scary moments in album three that i thought we were gonna die thankfully we didn't but um there were there were definitely some scary moments and a lot of massacres there too um that, from our set from our side and now we are going to go straight to album four and the theme of this album is a situation that i think everyone can relate to um you know when you're just passing through the jungle minding your own business and suddenly you get shot in the butt with a tranquilizer dart and then you get put on a boat you know that's just an average tuesday for this for this gorilla and so we're going to go to album four adrift where we get introduced to a pretty cool mechanic and that's called the containers the containers are what are, is one that we just sat in however uh oof Ugh, please shoot me now so that i can just not have to deal with having two hits two hit points for the rest of this level um so the containers are these guys right here you can use them as cover however the the good thing about him is that you can't use them as cover the bad thing about him though is that um whenever you push the i forgot to mention that you're doing the push animation saying pushing enemy towards uh in um pushing an enemy inside towards a wall or in, into another enemy or in this case pushing open a door um of one of the crates the uh crates will actually slow you down because your momentum will go will ever so slightly uh decrease whenever you whenever you open a door and so or when you have that push animation just in general and so it's a risk reward situation you know you get that cover but you don't want to slow down too tremendously and overuse the containers because otherwise you're going to uh slow down and right here we get another in the dark sequence however this one's really different because the enemies do not have flashlights and because the enemies do not have flashlights they will just start shooting in random directions hoping that they shoot you <laughs> like it did right there um but sometimes sometimes on very rare occasions um sometimes the enemies will shoot other enemies and i think one of the worst things that could happen as a matter of fact is um when an enemy shoots a bomb guy that's next to you and then just exp just the explosion kills you in one hit um but thankfully we seem to be having better luck on this second go around and you know, it's also a thankfully moment. What? What is that, George? If we have a moment, that is. If I'm of course, continue. continue. It's also thankfully that we have a $20 donation from Char underscore Bunny saying, Well, this run is fantastic. Great job, Osmorn. <laughs> Thank you, Char Bunny. Thank you so much. Um, anyway, we, right here we are getting introduced to uh, 4 or 3. I used to be very indifferent with this level. I didn't really find it all that hard, um, and until one day I was on PB pace. My current PB is a 26:43, and um, I was on 25 minute pace, and then I died in this level, and now it is my least favorite level of all time. I despise it with a passion, um, and people warned me about it. They warned me that I was going to get 43, and I did. And now I'm on their side and saying that we don't, none of us like it. Because the reason we don't like it is, first of all, it likes to give you a lot of enemies in groups. And enemies in groups, especially when it comes to really close quarters like this, it is n definitely not a fun time. And it gives you probably the most annoying enemy in groups, which is the Melvins, like this one. Um, uh, they're just really difficult to deal with. And as you can see, that's part of the reason. And so, you, uh, oh my, uh, uh, oh my god, an absolute massacre here. You can just take so many good moments out of this run and just, uh, just view them out of context. Just so many massacres happening. Um, but thankfully, as I suspected, this game is giving us better RNG on the second go around so far. And I'm also just going to play it a little bit um safer you know you don't want to lose more time than you already have after a death but depending on where in the level the death is it usually won't waste as much time as you think it will um oh my goodness i really wanted to play it safe here and i just um became even more engulfed in here um and in, in engulfed in the in in dying and stuff and so one thing that i did oh my oh my oh my oh my god what is going on there's so many enemies my goodness i'm just not having the time of my life 
we are not this is not a very cash money moment and I guess one thing that I could talk about that I usually talk about that I just haven't had the moment to yet is just the risk reward relationship that you have with this game um, interacting with enemies waste time however you don't want to not interact with enemies all the time because um, because usually uh, because usually they will end up shooting you if you just choose not to interact with enemies sometimes especially in a level like this where there's so many enemies shooting you all the time um, thankfully some of these deaths have only been at like the beginning of a level and so they don't they relatively speaking don't lose that much time but it's still pretty annoying like we have seen today i'm gonna be very safe because i do not trust this guy whatsoever we're gonna we, we we're, we've lost a significant amount of time from this level however um one thing there's one rule in about there's only one rule and that is, if you lose time, it is never your fault. <laughs> also, I got this weird bug in which if you get shot during a level transition, the music will actually keep going instead of stop, and that's what's happening here. Um, but yeah, if, if, if you die in Ape Out, if you lose time, it's not your fault. It's the game's fault. It's RNG. Just blame RNG and move Just on. Just blame the game. game. Just blame the game. Okay, and now we are invincible. We, you probably saw me restart level at the beginning of there, and the 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 reason I did that is because um, now I'm invincible. As you can see, I am currently getting shot and nothing is happening. I am just not bleeding. That's how we know that we've gotten shot. We are not bleeding. And the reason that that works is because the developers decided to make an interesting choice in which there is an explosion at the beginning of that level during a cutscene. And instead of making it a special explosion that just doesn't kill the player, the developers decided to give the player 99 health during that cutscene and revert it back to 3 once the cutscene's over. However, if you restart level during that cutscene when you have 99 health, you can actually keep 99 health throughout the rest of the level, excluding the very, very last level. Because there's a scene change and that will revert your health back to 3. However... As you can see, now we don't even have to interact with these enemies. And we do get introduced to one new enemy, this guy. It is the Missile Launcher. The Missile Launchers are good and bad. Good in the sense that they will give you a huge boost of speed if they shoot you. Um, and so you can use that to your advantage. Uh, bad because their missiles are in explosion. And any explosion in this game normally would be instant death. However, um, the actual hit points that an explosion gives is 10 and so um, you can you can imagine that um, I have died here once before because I was so reckless that I just let these enemies keep shooting me because you're technically not invincible I did lie in that sense that you're technically not invisible invincible um, you uh, do have 99 health it's just that you're practically invincible because realistically speaking unless you're very very reckless you will not get hit enough for it to matter um, but that's uh, that's one thing that you do have to worry about is that these guys do 10 damage with their missile launches and so just be cautious about how much you're interacting with them or how much you're just letting them shoot you um, and so but overall you can just keep going through and I did mention that you can uh, purposely put yourself on fire and all the enemies run away in this in this level you can do it in a pretty safe way because you're not at risk of dying and now we're at the very last level Four, seven outro and we are in the most familiar situation a zoo and the zoo uh, introduces us to two new concepts first off we get introduced to the tranquilizer guys the tranquilizer guys will not hurt you in the sense that like they will not take a hit point away however it is very weird to it, they will kind of distort your vision have a lot of pretty colors fly up on the screen and also slow you down physically if I can get shot by one of them organically I will try to because I want to, I do want to show off what it looks like when you get shot by a tranquilizer dart in mid level. However, one thing that we also get introduced to is saving the animals. Um, these animals will actually um, act as targets for 
other um, for other enemies and they will also start to kill the other enemies along with you and the percussive music the reactive system of this music um, in this game will actually also um, start uh, reacting to the enemies killing other to the animals killing all the all the other enemies and so that is something that's very nice about this game Ooh, okay Ooh, I'm very afraid here but thankfully we got through it that's actually the end of this level the timing will end when ape out appears on the screen and the piano kicks in so three two one time all right Jesus. that was ape out warpless um what was my final time if you don't mind asking i'm still waiting on stream delay to catch up but it should be catching up anytime here soon so i have a lot of delay 32 14 so underestimate 20 29 14 32 14 32 14 <laughs> 29 would be great <laughs> oh that would be great 32 14 oh, okay i was I, I i heard something completely different um but, oh dang it i accidentally pressed a so i couldn't let the the credits roll out but um that Aww. beautiful song was um uh you gotta have freedom by pharaoh sanders and it is just an absolutely beautiful song i think uh it, the adrenaline that you get when you you know um get a pb and uh and have that uh song play it's just absolutely amazing i wish i didn't accidentally press something like controller so i could let it play out but uh with that being said um my name has been osmorn this is ape out warpless i hope you really enjoyed the run um shout outs to fire splitter for um doing the next run and shout outs to uh bullets i know that they are very like um closely knit with the uh, Midwest Speedfest family and they they walked with this game so that I could run because they used to run this game uh, pretty frequently as well and so I am very glad to be here I hope to be back with um, other Midwest events in the future and again thank you for having me I really enjoy uh, being with this group of people and so it's very nice to be part of this marathon um, but I don't have anything else to say other than uh, join the Discord, ronspiro.com, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're a very nice uh, group of people, and the, the game's only 15 bucks on Steam, so you can get that as well. Uh, come play with us, or just play casually, it's very underrated. But uh, yeah, that's what I have to say about everything, uh, and I'm just going to leave it off to George. Good luck to Fire Spitter on the next round. Yeah, thank you so much for the run, uh, Osman. As, as you just said, we have five splitter coming up with Warrior Get It Together. So stick around, we're gonna set it up, we're gonna go on intermission, and we'll see you all soon for that run.